Welcome to another episode of On the Ledge with Dante and Ricky. I'm Dante. And I'm Ricky. And I made a stupid purchase, Ricky. Remember that thing I was talking about? (laughs) There's this Iron Man helmet, and it's like $400 Canadian, but it opens up, but it has voice commands. So I could be like, Jarvis, power on, and it powers on. And I'm like, Jarvis, open the mask, and it opens, and and then it looks cool when it opens. And then like uh, Jarvis close the mask and then Jarvis activate combat mode and it does it. So it's worth it. <laughs> but it was like, it was like five something with. Uh, it's pastors. just a cosmetic piece though, right? Like you would, you wouldn't use it for anything else. Well, no, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't use, use it, it in for... combat. <laughs> <laughs> I would use, well, I, I, I also, I like, cause like cosplaying as that's something I actually like on my list for some reason, I kind of want to do a cosplay. Like a actual cosplay, like down the road sometime, okay, like, of something of like either like um Miles Morales as Spider Man, because like there's this costume I've been looking at. There's this uh I think they're called RC. I'm gonna mess up the name. RC Studios or something on on like uh Instagram, and they make like different Spider Man costumes and other uh, character costumes. But they have this Miles Morales one, but I think it's like six hundred and thirty dollars, uh Euro dollars though. So that's like a thousand something over here. So it's just like, uh. yeah, cosplay costumes are always like very expensive. And I, yeah. I've always wanted to, too. Yeah. Um, and I guess this kind of really ties into what we're going to be talking in today. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to cosplay myself, but because of my body shape um, and the, this, like just my body size, I've always yeah. felt a little bit insecure about showing because a lot of the costumes are like more tight the cosplays are right. more tight um you either have to be completely ripped <laughs> to look good <laughs> as a character um so for me it was like i've always wanted to do it but because of how i looked i was always really insecure about that so i never wanted to show people yeah um, so i've always kind of been more comfortable doing a little bit more of a baggy cosplay uh, but as if you watched anything marvel dc anime there's no such thing as a baggy character no. they're always in the tightest clothes possible well, tight, tightest <laughs> tightest costumes ever sometimes they have like but it's more like a more casual outfit like there's this one spider-man costume when he's a little bit uh, older where he has this like jacket and he flips it over and then it's the costume so it's just literally a jacket like a uh. like a uh a uh, motorcycle like leather jacket and he literally like flips it inside out and then that's the costume he, he pulls out his mask like that's that's what's baggy and then like smallville they when they did their iterations of like his bootleg <laughs> superman costumes he had one with like a trench coat and he just wore like a t-shirt jeans and a trench coat he kind of looked like he was in the matrix uh, but like uh, that's another one too sometimes sometimes there's ones you could do that aren't as big but it, like is that something what? that not even just tying to cosplay but like like you with your body is that something that's always been there something that's come up more recently some oh no that's always been there so uh, i used to go well i've only been twice but i used to go mm-hmm. to anime north which is just an anime convention yeah um similar to fan expo where you just see a bunch of people dressed up um during their cosplay and you know i've always wanted to be a part of that but because of my body size and shape i just couldn't figure out how I would, you know, be a part of that. So then I just mm-hmm. opted out of it. Um, so yeah, I've always wanted to because you know you want it's it's a more fun if you can be a part of it and just do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so because of that, I just never really wanted to show myself. Now I'm a little bit less worried about that. I right. guess I just don't care. Yeah. Um, I I care a little bit, but like, I'll go swimming i used to be really scared about going like swimming just taking off my uh, shirt just because of yeah. my body's shape and so yeah, i'm like a little bit bigger um so people who can't see obviously or don't know me so i've always been a little bit shy about that um but yeah cosplaying is cool it's just it's not for me i guess <laughs> mm. it's a weird yeah see like i would have not picked up on that with you because i've never seen you like as out of shape but then i i can't tell you how to feel about your body too right so like for me yeah. i'm i'm 
I'm in like <laughs> right now because of the pandemic, definitely right now. Cause I've, I've gotten in a little bit of a gut and stuff. So right now I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't like me right now, but I've always been in shape. Um, Cause like doing like Taekwondo from a young age, I've always been like steady working out. And then like when I uh, retired, <laughs> I just went to the, oh no, still when I was in Taekwondo, I, w- I started going to the gym. And then when I retired, I continued with the gym. So I've always been, um like in shape but there's still like the insecurities like even like competition wise of like hey why am i not as big as this person like like our friend samir i was always i would always be in my head even though it shouldn't be that serious because like he he got like super jacked and i was just like wait why am i not super jacked i would be i should be super jacked like that but like obviously our body are different too he's taller than me and everything too so like there's different things as well too but like I've, I've I've kind of been insecure about it, but then also because like when I when I lost my abs during the pandemic, that's when I was just like, oh man, I miss my abs, bro. I miss them. I want them man. back. That's what. That's the biggest. Not obviously the death and stuff. That's horrible. But with the pandemic for me, when I'm being selfish, I just want the gyms open back up so then I could get my body back and I could get my six pack back and then I I could be, you know, feel beautiful again. <laughs> yeah. No. I think recently oh well, okay ever since i started going to the gym i definitely mm-hmm. put on a lot more muscle and then I, yeah. I felt a lot better about myself yeah but it was at that point where i started to realize it's not always about how you look it's about how you feel that's um, true. Yeah. and so that's kind of just how i changed because i know definitely i could look a lot better and then if i'm at the gym there are like i'm in like the bottom one percent where you know or no you know what i'll say i'm like at the bottom 50 percent where the other half of the people in the gym are like monsters i don't know how they got to that size or how they got <laughs> to show every single muscle in their entire body um yeah. so yeah when our friend samir he posted like a picture and you it's just noticeable that he's like that much different like he looks exactly. so much more ripped and jacked um and something like that, when it's someone as close as, or I think it's not even that they have to be close, but um, when I saw that picture, it was after I made that ment- mental change. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I realized, okay, he put in a lot of work yeah. and he put in like a lot of discipline to get it to where he was. So I wasn't jealous. Obviously, I'm a little bit jealous because I want that, but yeah. you know, I know I didn't put in the work, so I don't deserve that. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't get jealous of other people now because I know if I want that, I just have to really put in the work and dedication. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's back then it was bad. And even now, sometimes I'm a little bit more shy about my body. So I want to wear mm-hmm. a little bit better clothes, I guess, like more fitting so that, right. you know, less things are showing, but back in high school, and I think you're just being nice, but back in high school, that's when I think I felt the uh, most insecure about my body because I, I honestly, honestly, I unless my brain is because like some stuff I just don't remember now. Like when I'm trying to go back to high school, I can't like picture everything now. Um, I have to like really think, or something has to like jog my memory or hit me back. But I, I honestly, I didn't feel that you looked like overweight or anything but again i i i I, I couldn't tell you how to feel or anything like that that's never something i was like hey ricky's kind of bigger like that's never a thought that walked through my head it's just you're telling me so it's never that and then i think that might have been it too too. yeah but like no no yeah for sure there's nothing wrong with it you you know obviously make some good life choices it's not about how you look yeah it's about how you feel so if even if you don't you're going to the gym and you're not getting these gigantic shoulders, back, whatever. If you feel good at the end of the day, then it doesn't really matter. Like when I finished working out, the pump and just the feeling like, wow, I did that, you know, that's mm-hmm. more important than I don't have a six pack. I don't have right, right, right. my triceps aren't like the most toneest thing in the world. As long as you're doing the right thing. But yeah, back in high school, back on track. Mm-hmm. Back on the ledge, I should say. Back on the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> Back in high school, I think it was, or you know, in our when we were much younger, I was yeah. always taller than most people. Um, mm-hmm. So that might have been it. But underneath everything, it was just I just felt almost like not disgusting, and it might have been because other people 
who had like closer people, like family members, they might have given me that idea that, you know, um, I was bigger, I was fatter. So I was like a mm-hmm. little bit insecure about that. Not a little bit. I was pretty insecure. Um, but it was really, I think in grade 11, I decided to just do 20 minutes of elliptical running every day. Um, and I was able to shed a lot of weight. And that's when I started to feel a lot more confident. And I think it's not even about the weight loss. It's it's about the the idea that I just had to put in work mm-hmm. and I can get my results. It was that idea that changed my whole perception of myself. Like, I look like this now, but if I want it to change, I just have to put in the work and get like the discipline to do it every single day and just stay consistent um, to really get the results. But yeah, it, it's still a little thing, something that bothers me because I think one of the toughest things is uh, buying clothes for me because oh, okay. I feel like I'm in like that right in between. So if I go medium, mm-hmm. I, it's tight and everything, you can see everything. If I go large, it sometimes doesn't fit as great because mm-hmm. it's a little bit baggier. Um, but I think for me, just how I see myself, I prefer to be a little bit on the, like I would get a larger size just so that I'm not exposing, um, all the little details on myself. Uh, yeah, but yeah, like it was a perfect tie into your cosplaying and your no, it Iron is, yeah. Man helmet. Yeah. I didn't even think about that but, that way too. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, <laughs> but it's not here yet. Hopefully by the next episode it's here and then I can wear it. <laughs> You'll see it. <laughs> Cause I gotta I gotta show it off since I spent five hundred dollars on it. But um so, yeah. when are you getting the rest of the suit? <laughs> <laughs> when I become a millionaire? <laughs> no, that stuff's expensive, bro. But like, that yeah, would be for like sure. my dream if like I had the money like that is to have like um maybe even like a display room. Cause I've seen it for some people where they have like all their like figures and stuff. So like the different like uh, more expensive figures that look cool but then also too like if they have like a full suits or if they cosplay they put them up on like the stance so it's like when the superhero has their costume like on a thing or whatever like on the what's the word I'm like on a mannequin right mannequin like, or uh, whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like on a mannequin uh, i would love that i would i would I think, like that's yeah yeah in terms of money i think it'd be cheapest to do like a uh, spider-man just because it's all fabric um yeah yeah put that on Iron Man, that be <laughs> no, that's Iron like buying cars. No matter what, yeah, no matter what, Iron Man would be expensive. But I think I think we're also getting close to when people actually have because I know there's people that have like those jetpack things and they're trying yeah. to get there, but it's just like being compact as he is is like is the hardest part, right? Like to the technology to do yeah. that. But yeah, yeah, but like other parts of your body though, like besides weight and anything like too, is there anything else that you're I have a about? lot. I think it's just growing up the way my nature was a little bit more shy as a child. Mm -hmm. I still am very shy. So my voice is another one, which is really weird. Yeah. So, okay. Listening to the podcast, I have, a. I think you too, if you were to listen to your own voice through the podcast, when we take, like do a second listen of our, what we're recording. Yeah. um, I think we agree that it's good that we have the other person because we hear the other yes. person's voice and yes. not just our voice. Yeah. Um, and I think everyone is like that. If you were to record someone, um, it's just so hard to watch your, watch it back because yeah. it's, it's like, what do I sound like? Yeah. I, 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 I hate the sound of my voice. I hate it. Like I, I hate it so much when I have to, so like exactly what you were saying when I was nervous to listen back to like the first episode, because I was just like, I don't want to hear me for an hour and change. I don't want to hear me. And I know it wasn't just me talking the whole time, but I don't want to hear me. But because we were going back and forth, that's what I was like, oh, okay. It's not just me, but I still hate my voice. But like, because like the voice I hear in my head is not what comes outside too. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just like, Ugh. but I think that's the same thing for everybody too. I was just like, yeah, in my head. I it's think so it's like better. you're expecting something. Yes. You hear it when you talk, but then you listen and you're like, that's not me. That's Who not what the I hell hear. is that? That's not what I hear. I do hear like what everybody does the impression of me. They're like, duh, 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 I'm like, no, that's not me. I don't talk like that. But then when I hear it, I'm like, maybe it's kind of that. It's kind of that. It's not exactly that, but it's kind of that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's harder to listen. I think, yeah, but everyone's probably gonna have the exact same thing. Like 
our voices something is just hard to listen to back it's uh, um i have another one that's similar to the voice but i don't yeah. know if you've ever i think it's very unique in that sense or it's i'm very conscious about my breathing because so i for the longest time i have no idea why too my nose is like constantly clogged mm. so i don't know what to do if you guys have any solutions please let me know is it like a oh my brain it's a like a sinus thing yeah so like i honestly don't know what to do i've looked online they say use a humidifier um i've taken astaxanthin which i don't know my sister told me to take it it's like it's a vitamin um, oh i was like what yeah, <laughs> yeah she, what? she just told me and that helped for a little bit but it's so expensive that i don't really want to keep buying it mm. um but i might have to if that's the case if it like works i just might have to just buy it um but for so what for as long as I can remember, I've always had people question like my snoring, my breathing. So I remember this as crystal as day. I was working, um, I was pulling an all nighter with my group in university, mm -hmm. and I was just listening to music, and I'm just working away. And someone walked in and said, um, "What's that sound?" So I took off my earphone and I said, "What sound?" They're like, "Who's breathing so loud?" And I. And then at that point, I had known about it before, but at that point, it kind of made me like really question my breathing. So I'd always oh. slow down my breathing so it wouldn't make a loud sound. Um, and if you guys don't know, it's because I can't breathe through my nose. I have to breathe through my mouth. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm always like inhaling and out exhaling through my mouth. So it sounds um, loud. And... It's also something I look for when I'm listening to the podcast. I don't know if you notice it, but sometimes I can hear myself breathing. And it, I think it was in the first episode or second one. But after that, I became very conscious about it. And I start to control my breathing. So it's a little bit slow. So oh, that wow. you can't hear it. Yeah. So it's very, yeah, I, it's, it's still happening to this day. So that's why it's something that I've always noticed. Um, it's also some a reason why I'm always playing around with my microphone settings yeah. because I want to find out what the kind of like the sweet spot is where my where it doesn't pick up my breathing. Um, I also have like a microphone a little bit further away or I try to stay a little bit further away. But yeah, it's that's one that I don't think a lot of people have because uh, like, you know, your body is always one that everyone's really insecure yeah, about and they think yeah. about but mine is like whenever i'm walking down the street or in like a if i'm in like a tight like a small space with a lot of people i'm really thinking about my breathing to make sure that like i'm not breathing too loud and i'm not like disturbing other people that's uh yeah something i always think about see i i would have never picked up on that because I, I guess it's not something that i'm listening for or paying attention for and I'm, I'm not going to try to pay attention for it now, like to like <laughs> draw it out and be like, Hey, I'm noticing it now. But, um, like, no, I've never, I've never noticed it, but that's like, that I, I can only imagine how that feels like, cause that's a, yeah. definitely one. Now I'm not a doctor, but I've heard this thing. Do you know if it's like, cause you were mentioning sleeping and is it that there's like a lot of loud snoring and stuff like you're trouble yeah. breathing while you're sleeping? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> okay. So sometimes. obviously I can't hear it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I, my girlfriend has told me that sometimes when I'm sleeping, it sounds like I'm having a tough time breathing. So it's like I'm gasping for air. Um, Do you know if it's sleep apnea? I don't know. I, I think I've heard of that, but I don't think it is. I looked it up and I said, yeah. it's, it's pretty serious if it is because um, I could die. I think it is like you're just not breathing. Yeah, because I know like... um. I think I mentioned him last week too, the comedian to hear, to hear more. And then there's other people I know too that have like the sleep, uh, the, mm. I think it's called the sleep apnea machine or whatever. So they have to sleep with this mask on and stuff. So it regulates the breathing or whichever to help with that. So I'm just wondering if it, but again, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I probably should check that out. I haven't been to the doctors in forever. 
<laughs> but I know that sometimes they say, sometimes like my girlfriend will say, when I'm sleeping, she can she thinks I'm dying, like I can't Whoa. breathe, like like because if you don't hear a sound, then all of a sudden it's like it's just like oh yeah, and then, uh, loud noise, okay. like a gasp for air. So it's like, yeah, it's I don't think it's as bad anymore, or maybe she's just mm. used to it now. Um, because I do, I try to breathe through my nose. So like, there's certain ways I have to tilt my head to mm-hmm. like open it up. I think it also has to do something with my weight, which I probably should start thinking about. Um, so it's like my body kind of linked to my breathing, which kind of makes sense. You know, if you're a bigger guy, you're obviously going to have a harder time breathing. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I should probably work on that. But yeah, as of right now, one of my biggest insecurities is probably my breathing. I just, I hear it all the time when I'm recording something. Um, so whenever I'm around other people, I try to slow it down or like really minimize the noise as much as I can. I, I think it's the worst when I'm in like the movie theaters because everyone's quiet. So it's like, if if it's during a really quiet part of the movie, it's it's kind of distracting to other people um, or during tests. Tests are another one that's so yeah one one thing i kind of like because d- when you said movies it reminded me of it too i think i have and i think i should get it checked out but i think i have indigestion because like i i i burp and i'll try to like it's like it's something's like it feels like something's clogged so i'm trying to burp to uh avoid it or something but i would do that i noticed i started doing that in like but it would happen like um in the movie theaters but i think it's like me being like having anxiety because let me jump off the ledge and tell the story of when I thrown up in the movie theater. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we we went to see the movie The Gray uh, with uh, Liam Neeson's and <laughs> he was fighting the wolves. And I think before that we did we did there was that we did in high school like double lunch or whatever or we would eat a lot. And me being lactose intolerant. I know I can't eat certain shit, but the certain shit that I can't eat, I love. So what I eat it, if I eat it, like a lot of it, like I think we did McDonald's and then maybe I had something dairy. So my stomach is like, hey, if I'm telling you, 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 you got to go. You, oh, this is going to get, <laughs> you got to go. And I guess in the movie, I was like, I don't want to miss the movie. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I don't feel so great. And then I, I, I threw up in the theater. So everybody. <laughs> To get up and move ahead and I left <laughs> it's something I can laugh at now but I think in the back of my head I'm always Isn't nervous that what happened in your car too hey we're you know, driving <laughs> <laughs> so yes it happened again maybe like a year later or something this time I know it was like because I had pizza and then I think we were at Richard's house uh, Richard A. Tall Richard so we, I had pizza and then Cheetos and then something. It was just a combination. And for whatever reason, we were, I think we were trying to find a restaurant to eat at, eat at, but everything was packed. And I was like, I should go, I should ask them to use the washroom, but we're not eating here. So I'm like, I don't think I can. Or no, we were trying to go to the pool place. I was like, I don't think I can because we're not going to eat here. So I can't ask them to use the washroom. And then what I was driving, so... This situation, though, I was a hero and a villain at the same time. Let me explain how. So we were turning left, and my body's like, you're sick again. Throws up. And we were turning left. And, and like, I was driving. I was driving. We're turning left. So, yes, I put everybody in danger, but I, I completed the turn. I completed the turn and saved everybody. So I, at the end of it, I'm a hero, right? That's that's how it works. I'm a hero at the end of it. Yeah, man. Through adversity, you through adversity, through. I rose like a phoenix from the ashes. <laughs> I rise. Man. Yeah, but it's something I could laugh at now. But I think back to what I was getting at. I think it's something in the back of my head, and probably not eating properly too. Um, in the back of my head, I'm worried about doing that. So then I'll make like this weird burping noise or have to burp a lot. I don't know. I don't know if it's connected. Oh, I think I have something similar to that where uh, maybe it's a combination of foods, but my stomach just does not handle that well. Um, But then I'm also not 
the type of person to use a public washroom mm. unless like it's absolute like this is i cannot make it anymore this is it like if i don't go it'll be even worse situation than if i just don't you know no i i don't i i used to be like that but now my stomach bro my, my stomach me though it doesn't cooperate it's like hey buddy do do what you gotta do or you're in trouble so i'm just like i go a line, uh, I'll sir? hover, I'll do whatever. <laughs> Certain places I will not go. Like, oh, if it looks, if it's like, it, yeah, if it's like a downtown, like I'm going to like some sketchy karaoke place. The washrooms haven't been maintained in 15 years. I'm, I'm gonna opt out. I'll, I'll shit my pants if I have to. <laughs> Oh no, I'm not doing. It. See, that's one thing I, I'm not. I, I never have. Knock on wood, and I, I, I don't want to. That's something I, I don't want to do. So I'm not. I'm not. That's that's a fear of mine. That's a that's a weird fear. I do not want to like do it in my pants. I don't know why. I, I oh, I've never done it in public. Now. So <laughs> sometimes you know you just shut it and you just don't know and you're like, whoop. Oh, I think what I it is. <laughs> It took us to get to our bowel movements. I think I've sharted before, but I don't think it was been a full. <laughs> oh no no yeah yeah yeah. Like I, 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 I have enough. Think, yeah, I think I've I you know, you seen it. It was just like oh maybe some of it got out. You know, like just a little bit. No nah, not too not all of it. Just a little yeah. bit got out. But that I I probably done. But not a full like hey I gotta throw these oh, out. Oh yeah no. <laughs> yeah, no 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 no. Yeah I don't think I would never get it to that point like. Like I said, if it's that, if it's to that point, I'm using the washroom no matter yeah, yeah, what. Yeah. Like, I don't care where it is. It could be in the woods. I'm using the washroom. But back to what I was saying, uh, I have, so even if it's a, like, I just don't like using the washroom to do a number two. Yeah. If it's someone else's house or oh, especially, yeah. yeah, if it's someone else's house, because I don't want to, you know, ruin anything. If it's a public thing, I don't give a shit. It's not my problem it's not their problem too no i i, so I, I definitely yeah 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 and so i i tend to hold it but my stomach just cannot like it just it's just making some whack-ass noises and i get really insecure about that and so I'm, yeah i'm like on the fence do i go or do i just hold out because god like i don't know maybe i'll be here for another few hours or well, no, should i just too. go and then you're like insecure about how long you're in there too, right? Because like, do you yeah. ever get that? Like, if I'm like, hey, do they, I'm like timing myself, like, do, do people know how long I've been in here? I'm just doing number one. I had a lot to drink. <laughs> do yeah. they know how long I've been in here? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's that that, yeah, me and my yeah, me and my stomach is a whole insecurity with that stuff. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so yeah, I think my stomach is another one too. Like yeah. I, I get the weird the weird sounds. I don't I think I'm good with controlling like if I need to go, I can hold it. So yeah. funny story. On a flight to Australia from Ooh, San Francisco, which is roughly fifteen hours, Jeez. give or take. Um I back then I was just stubborn kid. So I did not first of all, at that time I would not I would not use a public washroom, no matter what. For 15 hours? Yeah, no, I, I was that kid. I did not want to touch it. I did not, not want to touch the public washroom. I didn't even get up. I sat there for 15 hours. <laughs> you gotta sleep. Like, I would have to, like, I would have to sleep. Uh, I, was, I was awake the whole time. I was playing my game. I was awake. I was, because I just didn't want to. My parents and my sister were getting pissed because they're like, get up. Like, yo, you got to walk. Your <laughs> legs are going to get cut off. So You got to do something, man. You got to get circulation back. <laughs> yeah. And so I held my piss. I held my poop for 15 hours. And then when I got there, it took probably like another hour or two to get to where I need to go. And then I went. But I think that's... If anyone tells me, oh, I can't... Oh, like you can't do this for this many hours. I said, I've done it for 15 hours before. I can do it. Don't worry. <laughs> I could do it. I know me. <laughs> yeah, I've trained my body to do this. Okay, this is. <laughs> I've trained my body, but Australia is in trouble. When I land, when I touch down, <laughs> the first toilet in Australia is done, so, bro. 
<laughs> They're gonna have to retire this one. <laughs> Put in my name on the front of the door. Retired. <laughs> they keep retiring this one. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, okay. One more, one more story about poop, and then that's it. I swear, guys, we're done. We're done. One more story. So when we went to, oh, this was a few years back. When we went to Montreal that one time, I think after we ate something, it was me, Samir, Richard S., and Stephen, and we were just walking around, and then there was just a point where I was like, guys, guys, I, I gotta, I just, I, I, I gotta, I got, I gotta go. Like this is not, a, this is, this is code red. Like I, I gotta go. And we were walking and trying to find a place. And there was like this hotel we went by in the like, washroom, like try to speak to the person that like, eh, you can't because you're not staying at the, the hotel. And we w- must have walked. It must have been like 30 minutes or something before we found some place. Like we, we found like this place that had washroom. Bro, I sped walk because I couldn't run. But I sped walked to the road. I, <laughs> oh, whoever went in there next, I feel sorry for you, bro. Cause that was that was the worst. Oh, that was. But then when when it was over, I felt like a. I lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. No more. No more. No more poop. <laughs> it's it's funny, like how like poop stories are so. It's like it's all because of us and just how stubborn we are. Like, oh, we can yeah. hold it or whatnot. Yeah. And then it's like when we're in trouble, that's when the story. That's when you know you're gonna get a good story out of yeah, it. You're gonna get a good story, you know. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> had to run around Montreal finding a washroom. <laughs> well, what about um? Uh, because another thing that I find um insecurity about is hair. Hence, why I'm wearing a hat right now. I didn't do it the first episode, even though I should have, because I, I, again, I miss my barber so much. But um, like, I feel like my, because I, I think I'm starting to notice it, that my hairline is starting to, to, it's, it's, it's gone. It's, it's, it's starting. It's not, it's not, it's not gone, but it, it's starting to be like, hey, we're at the end of the line, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> so like, like if when I get a haircut, my barber saves me every time. And I'll, I'll probably be like good for like a week, week or two, because I, I I would go every two weeks when the world was open. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, just like right now, I'm not even gonna take off my hat to show. Right now, it's just like no, my hairline is no. And then the facial hair. So like, because I've had this struggle beard, well, not right now, but I've had it for a while now. Like I, I've been having the growing beard, but it it's never connected, and that's one of the things that's always been bothering me. Now I'm okay because like. I see more and more people where they have that too. Like even people, cause I feel like sometimes with age, that's where that'll come to. Like some people just right off the bat, they got it. They got the full thing that yeah. connects. It's good. And I'm always like jealous of that. But like, um, that's one thing I was like, oh, when it doesn't connect or it's patchy here, patchy there. Like the last time I shaved it, I saw that certain areas that were patchy started to grow in. And I could feel like the hairs starting to come in. And it's just like, I think I, could, I gotta keep working at it, but. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm always, I think, will still, like, till the end of my days be insecure about. Yeah, no, I, so I don't think you've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, I've worn a hat every single episode. No, no, no I noticed, I noticed. I yeah. noticed, we mentioned it, we and talked so, about yeah. the hat, like, what are the second one? The... Yeah, so I, it's not that I'm insecure about my hair, because my hair is, I like to keep it long and everything, it's, mm-hmm. I have, I think, a very, um, narrow idea of what my hair how i want to style my hair i guess Mm. Um, and if it's not in that style i don't really want to show it um so during the pandemic i i basically gave up styling my hair because who the hell is going to see me Um, right and if they do see me then whatever i guess (laughs) yeah when Um, like before the world closed like you went to the barber to get it cut or to the salon or wherever or yeah i used to go to the barber so the last i guess over the last year i got my girlfriend to do it Mm -hmm. um so she would just i i don't know like she's not a barber she's never done it before me so i don't really have any expectation i don't care she can she has a vision and she goes with it and then i I at this point because no one's gonna see me, it just grows back out. 
I don't care. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not, I don't know that I have insecurity about it. Um, until I have to go out in public with my hair done, then I'm constantly thinking about my hair and trying to fix it, even mm -hmm. though I cannot see it. So I think I might be one of the people that constantly touch their hair, even though there's product in it, my hands get all oily. Mm -hmm. I constantly fix it, even though like if it, I feel a little bit of hair on my forehead where it's not supposed to be, I'll put my, I'll, drag the entire thing to fix it um so mm -hmm. it's only when i actually do my hair that i start to think about it once i have a hat on no one's gonna see it but i've never taken the hat off it's <laughs> it's basic oh no yeah like if, if i have my hair cut or anything if it's at a certain height then if i have like if I, I if i have a hat on and i have my hair cut or it's at a certain height i'm not taking the hat off Cause like, it'll push it back a bit. And I'm just like, I need to like, and if I don't have like a brush on here, I like, I don't carry a brush around with me. So I, I'm, I'm, if my hat's on, it's on it's, and it's staying on, it's not coming off. Like yeah. it's, it's, it, it, it's staying on or, but like, yeah, the hat thing also started a little bit late. Like I didn't start cause I would always just be out like no hat or yeah. anything. I think it's because in school, uh, mainly in high school, you're not allowed to wear you're not, hats. You're not allowed to. Things. Yeah, but now that we're older and adults, no one gives a shit except at work. And, Wait, still can't do it. But and also too, like, what was the reason for it? Like, you'll hide stuff under there. Yeah, like that, I, that was the rule for maybe. school and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. Maybe it might also be like blocking. I don't know. It's blocking. Yeah, because like it, it was in uni where I started to wear hats more, and then I was just like, yeah, people like, don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird, but. Yeah, and then there was when I was studying for my CPA exam, mm -hmm. uh, I knew my hair was a distraction. Uh, so much so that I I just told my girlfriend shave it all off, and I I had such long hair at the time. It took me like eight months to grow it back to that length. Um, but because I played with it so much, it was distracting me. Like even though I'm not going out or anything, if it touches my forehead or like it's somewhere it shouldn't be it's touching it then i'm always constantly pulling it back and i'm just not focused on anything so i think i am pretty insecure about that like just how i look it's mm -hmm. it's all about appearance right like i'm just insecure how i look for other people like yeah or how i look to other people um facial hair i just don't bother with i just shave it off so <laughs> i don't have the same problem with you <laughs> Like, if it grows out, I don't think I'll ever have it, like, like grown out and go out. Like, I'm never going to do that. Mm. I've been pretty happy with the mask because no one can see. Well, no, that's the I thing, too. Like, yeah, like, right now, because when I shave, although we're not, now we're shooting podcasts, so people can see it. But, like, when I shave, that's what the thing I was like, okay, I'm fine. It's just my mask will be more fitting now. <laughs> I'm protected yeah. better because who knows because the beard kind of pushes it out a bit so I like uh, I, I think there's a thing with that where they were mentioning like at the beginning if you're not clean shaven then there's somewhat of a higher risk but as far as I know knock on wood I haven't gotten it so but um yeah with the mask stuff I'm like that's easier too but I think it's also too um I guess we'll tie into this one now or no maybe I want to go fashion in that one but um like with I don't know if this is more of like an insecurity or me just being kind of like introverted, but like with the mask, now I don't have to do like, you know, like when you're walking past people, if you're walking the dog, I don't have to do that, like that fake smile. Not that it's fake. I don't like smile. <laughs> I don't even look fake. at them. Well, that's smile. I just look at my dog. I don't even, I don't even look at them. I, I look at my dog. too. Sometimes. So like, um, I'll, sometimes I'll nod at people. I'll get people to nod. So it's usually when it's another black person, they're like, okay, I'll give you the nod. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> not that I don't nod at other people, I nod at everybody. But um, sometimes it's just like, maybe I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't want to do the, hey, how are you? Or the nod where you look into somebody's eyes and stuff. So then I'll just, hey, what's Latifah doing? And then I'll just look at her. So I don't have to look at other people. And then I'll look up when they're past me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I do that sometimes. That's like, it's just a reflex. Like sometimes it's like, I don't want human interaction right now. I just want to. Look at Latifah. Oh, I do that pass. all the time. I do not care. I because I first of all have like I should keep an eye on her just so that if she reacts to the people coming, then 
I'll yeah. be, I'll have like the fastest reaction. Um, I only, I think I, the only time I'll ever look at them is if they have another dog. Yeah. And our dogs are already getting custom to each other or like they're sniffing each other. Then I'll be like, oh God, I have to talk to these guys. I have to smile, fake smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if there's somebody just walking down the street, they're just do, doing a walk. I'm, I'm looking at my dog. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not going to bother yeah, I'll I'll do the dog look where sometimes like if it's just like, hey, we're close enough, they caught me. I can't do the turn away now because then then I feel like it's rude for some reason. So then I'm like, oh, I'll do the wave or or the. But if if somebody's waving to me first, then I'm like, okay, cool. Then I don't yeah. have to do it first. I hate initiating, and if somebody doesn't do it back, then I get a little like. Oh, I'm not you... initiating ever. What the heck? Oh no, no. sometimes I'll initiate because I feel like. I feel the vibe, right? Like, I'm like, oh, they're going to probably wave back. And then sometimes I'll do it and they'll miss me. I'm like, how dare you not wait? And then I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> then you feel yeah. like everybody's watching. Like, have you ever tripped and felt like everybody's watching you at the time? But yeah. nobody cares. Nobody cares. But every time, like, if I, if I look with the Tifa and I'm like, I'm like, what? And I was just like, Did anybody, oh, I, anybody I, see yeah, that? No, I talk to my dog. I don't care. And people can see, I don't care, but I'm talking to my dog and I'll be like, hey man, why are you going so fast? You almost made me fall. I'll blame it on my dog, you know? <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> oh, I never do that with her. I never, um, like... I talk to, like, I talk to my dog as if they're another person and then I'll just blame them for everything that happens. Like, yeah, why you poop so much, man? <laughs> this, is, this is me jumping off the ledge a bit, but me being a little crazy, but still on the topic that we're talking about. But uh, I think that me and Latifa can talk telepathically. So I <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know, like we just get it. We just we're on the same vibe. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to say it out loud. She just knows sometimes, right? Like sometimes like I'll do the action, right, Teeth? Don't bark if I'm right. A so sometimes I just feel we're on the same page. Like sometimes as we're walking, she'll look at me. I'll look at her. We make eye contact. You know, like we just had a moment. You know, we know we're on the same page. I got it. Like, hey, turn here. All she right. knows. Well, you know, that's because you do a, a route. They know where they're going. They want to go home. They know that the route is just to go home. Hey, don't don't tell people that. Don't tell people I do the same route every time, so she knows the turns and stuff. Don't tell that. Just pretend like I could talk. To I do the same route. Up. I don't care. I'm no, I do the same the route, route, but just let let the lie go that I could talk to her telepathically. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this guy's a this guy's a medium. If anyone needs any uh, psychic uh, work, it's call, just to call her though. Day. I can't do it to other dogs. It's just to her. Ah, uh, we bonded. You, you remember the time home. we ran into um, is this Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer? Yes, yes, I remember that. <laughs> You're a huge fan of her, right? At the time. Well, I, I don't know if it's a huge fan because I don't want to watch, but I was just like, oh, shoot, that's that guy. But that's where I get, for some reason, and I don't know what it is. Well, I guess it's just shyness or whatever, but me around like famous people, I won't, because I remember this vividly. I wouldn't, I'm, I was like, hey, that's him, but I wouldn't do anything beyond that. I would just be like, hey, that's him. Uh, and then, then you were like, hey, we should go get a, pe a picture. So you went up to him and then I asked for the picture. So like that's kind of opposite where you are now with not talking to people, but you asked for the picture. I remember that vividly because I wouldn't talk to him. I was just like, I, I was like, I was so nervous. I get I just around all the celebrities like that when I took the picture with um the people from Smallville, so Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum. What I, I the the like going up in the line, I was like, I'm cool, I'm fine. It's just gonna be a quick two seconds because they're going through people like quick and everything there but i just like but the butterflies hit and everything i was just like kind of nervous but i was like hey and then i took the picture and i think i blinked and then we had to redo the picture so i got to like be like hey again <laughs> oh but like around nervous uh, around nervous people around famous people i just get nervous but then that's how we got pictures with him we should post those yeah <laughs> yeah i don't i you still we, have it do we still I have, have mine them? mine i, I, I check. Mine honestly on. i don't remember I posted mine on Facebook, and I think I'd like uh, a few years back I went looking for it. So now I have it like in uh, my photos on my phone. But I was just like, you for... must have gotten Latifa right before we ran into him. Yes, no, like at the time I think that's where because I was paying attention to him more because of Latifa. So it's just like yeah, yeah, because I remember him too. Like he had his dog like off leash, 
way up above him way ahead yeah of him. i didn't even I, notice him until you said it i was like oh yeah <laughs> and he was just like the dog was just listening he was like he could just say this one thing and the dog would stop immediately and just listen not bother anybody it's like that guy has crazy control but yeah i just get so i it's still to this day like um even um to that fan expo uh i don't think she's done it in the last few years well obviously because of the pandemic there hasn't been fan expo but like meg turney I like the first time I met her, I could barely get any words out. I was nervous. I was like, Hey, how are you? And then like, I think like three years in a row, I took a picture with her. And then I, I think the last time I got a little bit better, but just around famous people, I'm just like, I get into a wreck and I can't speak. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. It might be because that because you're like, you really follow them because yeah. I don't think there's a, I don't run into any famous people and I don't really make it a, like, I don't go to any conventions you know, to, to actually see anyone. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's any one, oh, maybe Donald Glover, but there's not like one person I'd be like starstruck over. I just don't follow them as much, I guess. I think uh, I get starstruck over anybody and everybody, bro. I don't know what it is. <laughs> like, I can, I can um, yeah, yeah, sorry. It's, we, it's weird that, because I don't remember how we... All I remember was you said, oh, there's, there he is, the dog whisper. But I don't remember how we ended up getting to him and saying it. it I guess. We were at DECA. Yeah. Because we were like, it was when we had free time. So we were just roaming around downtown. And for, and I think he was at some, I think there was a dog convention the same weekend or whatever. Oh. So he was there for that. And then he was just like walking through Toronto. And then um, we, we, it just so happened that we crossed paths with him. Because I, I think I remember exiting a building. And then we literally think turned we were, and he was yeah. there. I think we That's went to Popeye's. Because we were right by Eaton Center. But I don't yeah, remember yeah, yeah, yeah. me going up to him. No, I no, I remember because I wouldn't talk to him. And you literally ran up and said, hey, can we get a You're, you're the dog was where you can we get a picture? I remember that vividly. I mean, maybe, really. maybe you didn't That's say so exactly characteristic. that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's different, right? It's just like, yeah, it, was, yeah, it just sounds so out of character for me. So, oh, okay. <laughs> and a little bit off the ledge. Uh, the only other time, because it's not like I run into famous. I've, I've met a few, but um, there was this Vince Carter camp. Uh, when I was younger, um, so he had a Vince Carter camp where um, like kids would be in it to play basketball, or whatever. It was like sponsored by Pepsi or something. And my dad got me into it. And you know me. I'm not, sports is not my thing all the time. I play basketball like Stanley. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit better. Just like all the basketball skills, like my dad has it and it went to my brother. It skipped me and went to my brother. They're both left-handed. It skipped me. I can't, I, like sports, like I was good, type, like athletic wise, I could do stuff. But my hand-eye coordination is not, it's like, not like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. So the Vince Carter camp, I think, we were playing a game and it, he didn't come till the last day. So th- it was like four days or five days of this camp. We did like drills and practices and got food and stuff. And he came the last day and was taking pictures. And so we were playing a game. So he was taking a picture with another group and my group was playing basketball and the ball like rolled off and rolled off by him while he was taking the picture. So I was running after it and I grab it and he turned, Vince Carter turns to me and goes, Hey, you trying to mess up my picture? And I think that part, I was just like, uh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> That's the interaction I had with Vince. He's a nice guy. Nice guy. Nice guy. It was just, he was being funny. He was being funny. Yeah, that he was, was being like, funny for sure. He's he's funny. Just, but for me at that time, I was just like, Vince Carter is mean, bro. Yeah, what the heck? This guy's like, like six feet. He's a monster to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have been like 10 or something. Like 10. Yeah, still, I, was just, I just remember like that. A... Yeah. A tower to you at that point. Oh, I mean, anyone he's still a tower to me. I'm five, six and a half. <laughs> yeah, but not as much. Not like, as much. Not as much. Yeah, but still, well, he was like, sitting down. He was sitting down. He wasn't standing like in the picture because they were sitting like on the bleachers or whatever, taking the picture. But I just remember that and like that that story. Like that story, I laugh at like hard now because it's so funny. But like at that time, I can re- like if I think about it hard enough, I can remember. I start to see it. I was just like, I can remember the nerves I had. I was just like, oh, did you get a I- picture with him? Yeah, we, we like, I, I think my, my group, 
maybe we hadn't gone yet or we already did and we were just because i think when one group was taking a picture the other groups were playing and then they were just like rotating that way yeah so i i think i don't know where that picture is but it's somewhere it's somewhere where I, i'll try to find it it's somewhere it's not like on social media anywhere though like it's Would like it a little like picture. a yeah it's like um but i don't even know what they're called anymore but like a <laughs> physical photo that's yeah like, like i don't know i, I, I can't even find that. the words you know like a printed out photo <laughs> remember yeah, those it's... a printed out yeah, photo it's... yeah like yeah, you met yeah, vince carter cool. you didn't even get his autograph damn i don't know if i think he pre-autographed the cases we got the photos in or he autographed them because i think every kid it must have been like 50 kids or something that's cool yeah yeah but, but there's a few there's a few famous people who have met but like yeah maybe that sparked why you're so nervous around that. maybe that, that's what i was trying <laughs> that's what i was trying to key into i was just like maybe that interaction i was just like <gasps> i'm nervous and everything but i was just like that's just a random thing and i i i, I was probably messing up the picture because i ran probably in front of the photographer as i was catching yeah. the ball but i was getting the ball bro i was getting the ball and then oh man i thought you were gonna say he picked it up and threw it at you so. <laughs> He's like, get out of here, kid. Scram. <laughs> Scram. Get lost. Hey, you're out the camp. It's the last day, but you're out. You're out of here. Oh, that would have been bad. bad. Then I would have been that like Vince Carter's so a mean dude. Then I would have had beef, but now I don't have beef. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think anyone in Toronto has beef with Vince Carter. No, he's a legend, man. He's a legend. Yeah. But um, another thing uh, that I'm uh, insecure about, I think I'm okay about it now because... I find with a lot of these insecurities, except for like maybe like the the body stuff right now because of the pandemic, it's something that I'm still going with. The hair stuff I'm still going with, but other things I'm okay with now. So like this one, like fashion wise, because <laughs> all all the swag went to my brother Darian. Like that all it went to all it went to him. Like if you keep that part in where he came in for a sec, then you'll see the difference in how he dressed and how much better dressed he is than me. And I was like, that all went to him. Cause like me, I just need like a, a hoodie, jeans. I don't, I, I don't think about it, a hat. I just, fashion's not my thing. I don't. Yeah, fashion's definitely not my thing. Yeah. Uh, I have my girlfriend who helps me with all my fashion choices. Mm. Uh, so maybe I'm a little bit better, but before, so I'd like to think I have like a fashion sense. Yeah. But then you see people on Instagram, you see people on um, YouTube, see like my girlfriend's wardrobe, and you, I realize I have no fashion, uh, no fashion sense whatsoever. Like I have, I think I have a vision or an idea of what I want. Yeah. But I can't come to terms with spending the money on good clothes. Yeah. So I, I would rather have like comfortable clothes that are, you know, reusable, um, like you can wear them in multiple outfits. Right, right, right. right. Uh, rather than like a single piece, which is like very, very specific for this one outfit that I want to, someone wants to wear. It's, I can't, first of all, come to terms with spending money on that. And yeah. like I said earlier, my body shape, it's like the vision I have is for someone who's a lot skinnier and like more lanky than I am. So it's like the, the fit I would have to like cut so much weight to fit the vision that I have mm. um, and that's just not possible like well, it is possible it's just not for right now it's just I don't have this right mentality for it uh, so fashion sense uh, yeah I have no fashion too if you if you if I, I I had an idea for YouTube with my girlfriend where I use my current wardrobe Mm. And I pick up my best, I make my best outfit, you know, yeah. maybe my top three outfits. And I do a fashion show for my girlfriend Ooh. and she rates my outfit out of 10. Nice. Um, <laughs> so like, just, just to see, like, just to show, like, oh, I really don't have a fashion. So like what's in my wardrobe is like, you know, it's, it's not great. Um, but yeah. And then after that, it's like, use that as like a base point to build, a better wardrobe but again i don't want to spend the money for it <laughs> like no, good I, clothes cost yeah. so much they it, it's so much and like me like 
because like like i was saying i was just like if i have a hoodie or a sweater or anything which is like that's it or like these graphic tees that i have this is hold on this is a miles morales and i was just like i could wear stuff like that forever but it's just like i guess you want to and I, I this is me being dumb and insecure about it i guess too it's just like you can't wear superhero shirts forever but i'm like yes i can i can do what i want yeah. you know not that that's the only thing that i wear but i just love that stuff and then some of that stuff is so artistic too because like um this is from a site called t public and they have artists make the designs so like the artists are getting a piece but they don't just do it for superhero stuff they do it for like tv shows and everything so like yeah. the artists get a piece of like the the shirts that you're getting and everything they just like put it on and everything but like yeah i love stuff like that but other than that i'm just like i feel like i dress so play oh that's the other thing colors like my brother darian will like could go like crazy with colors that i'll never wear like me i'm probably like like darker blue black gray like anything dark and neutral <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's how i have like the dark toes and neutral i don't do like warmer colors i'll rarely do warmer colors or oh, purple too purple is like I, purple is my favorite color so like that's one color that i'll i'll um i'll kind of play with but i feel like that's kind of still more like i guess more neutral if you're doing like a darker purple or whatever but other than that like me i don't i don't have a sense like i like for the longest time my mom was still dressing me like up until like maybe like grade eight <laughs> my mom would be no really? grade six my mom would just okay. lay it out and i'm like i'm good bro she's doing it for me i don't care like i don't know what's because now it's just like i'll find myself probably wearing the same thing over and over and over again like I'm yeah the laundry or, or looking at the laundry so you could do it it's just like it doesn't matter but yeah me i have no i'm so simple with it yeah i i used to wear a little bit of color and then I met my girlfriend and she's like, why are you wearing that? So I did, that's when I kind of realized, man, my fashion sense is really bad. Yeah. Um, so I started getting more neutral colors, like yeah. black, whites, yeah. grays, not as many grays, but something that you can easily put into another outfit, like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. black pants, white shirt, black pants, black shirt, easy, right? Um, but I've been recently, so I, I like to do my shopping at Uniqlo now Ooh, okay. and they have a better fitting clothes i guess and they look a little bit more fashionable so there's like i've been getting a lot of turtlenecks mm. because turtlenecks are great for work <laughs> you can they're just Ooh. long sleeves and yeah. they are acceptable um they have nice joggers they have nice pants these they had these nice stretchy khakis that i love and they're just so comfortable yeah um so like i kind of if i'm ever gonna buy something it's gonna be from uniqlo but i might just get very basic stuff like basic shirts they have really nice um the pop graphic tees um so they do i don't i'm pretty sure you've seen them like with dc they had one uh the shirt with mickey mouse oh yeah where um, they do like the collaborations That's yeah like, and yeah. there's one that i absolutely love there it's with the artist but my fan is my favorite is like the jean michel basquiat and i don't know if i'm mispronouncing his name um, but he has oh, the crown logo. Um, okay, okay. And I okay. love his... I wore one of his shirts, I think, in one of the podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if he has something, I always check it out because I love his designs and I love his art. So it just looks so good. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm pretty much like you. Either a graphic tee, something with like a pocket or this little crest, I guess. Yeah. Um, or just a plain tee for me like a plain long sleeve plain tee um sometimes a hoodie would work too um but yeah it's <laughs> if you compare our styles to some of these ig models it was just like what the hell is this <laughs> no bro I, and I, but i also too like i don't think i, I think it's me a pulling off thing too like because i always i always go to my brother because like it's the biggest because i always I, I think of us as two sides of the same coin so we're opposites in a lot of things, but we're similar in some things too. But like, because again, like all the swag went to him. Uh, all went, like all went to him. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing from swag. So like some of the outfits that he would wear, I could never dream of pulling off. Like I could never, I could never ever do it. And he always, always looks fly. Always, 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 always. And at me, I'm just like, I'm cool being, you know, just calm and plain. And just but yeah, I think that's, that's because of, it might be because of like body shape and size because mm -hmm. there's there's outfits that i see like i think your brother might have like 
what I envision the ideal body for fashion. Um, yeah, because I, he I, wears, I, I, yeah. I don't know, I can't, I haven't seen his full outfits, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I'm imagining he's just you, but taller, I would say. Probably like me, but taller, the... prettier, better shape, you know. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's me being insecure yeah. again. <laughs> better, better shape. Because yes, but I, I, I think me, he can model for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, but what I'm trying to say is more like he's he's got the physique. Yeah. Um, he's he's taller. He's a little bit. He's not chubby, but he's like fit. I guess is yeah, no, probably he's, the he's, best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So like for me, it's like that's what I want my body to look like because yeah. I think when you're in that physique, when your body is kind of like that shape, that's the outfits I want to be able to wear. Like that's how would I put this? The, the fashion vision that I have, you would have to have that physique to pull off. Otherwise, mm. you know, it would look weird if I, if I were to wear it with my current body type because it just wouldn't work. Like it's, it wouldn't fit or like there's my thighs are too big. So then it's like disproportion. Mm -hmm. um, so it might always obviously be that like, yeah, it just might be that your brother has the, like a, the physique for fashion like yeah it's if you think about it there's like this one physique type um that all instagrams are you, you, like all instagram yeah. models are and that yeah. like that's the fashion we always see right that's um, what i was just about to say like it's like the uh the societal pressure and like what society standard of beauty and whatever it is too right so they're looking for the one size this is the size that they intend all the fashion I have for so like uh, maybe in situations for us where we me we may be on opposite sides of that spectrum um not like complete opposites or anything like that but like yeah. um just like different sides of the spectrum I should say then that would be like we're not maybe the intended one because like for me I'm why is my friend I have I don't think I'm the intended size for everything like I could probably still pull off like a kid's large not that I do I never do <laughs> but like I could probably still pull off a kid's. Well, I think I could fill it out, cause like me, I'm 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 medium, so I could I could like I feel like when I'm in better shape, like cause like no, I'm not in the shape I want to be, but um I could fill out a medium, a large. It would be too big for me, but I could fill that out like with my body. So yeah, maybe that's what it is too, like whatever. Yeah, society I think it's just what we see all the time. Yeah, on social yeah. media. It's like we. For me, like for me, not I'm not speaking for you. Like that's what I want to be eventually. Like mm -hmm. the fashion, like for it to work, I would have to be that body type, or I'd have to cut down like certain areas. Um, but it also just might be that we're just insecure about our bodies because I know yeah. people can definitely pull it off yeah. with our body types. Yeah. Um, and it's more just so how they feel in in the clothes. Yeah. Um, rather than just what we think other people are thinking about us, you know? Yeah. Um, which actually, okay, so there is one thing about my body that I, I, I call it a curse. No. But people, <laughs> people are always complimenting me on. So I have really big calves. Uh, and I know a lot of people cannot get big calves. Obviously, like, sometimes it's just genetics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I have really big calves and I don't really work them out. I think it's again, just genetics. Um, a lot of people say, wow, your legs are so big. And they say, well, your calves are massive. And I say, yeah, thanks. You know, cause it's a compliment. You know? Right. But what I always respond to that is like, it's thanks, but it's also a curse because I can't get pants that fit. Sometimes oh. I want pants like, so the legs and the thighs, oh, like the hips and the thighs, they fit perfectly, but then it gets to the calves and it's just like, it's just because they're tighter now, right? They're like really right. wrapping around it. Right. But the, the thighs are like loose, you know, not too loose, but like perfect. And the, the calves are just, they're just hugging the, the calves and it's just so weird looking. Oh, you, you just reminded me of insecurity that I had too with my legs. 
It's just that, because you know, I don't wear shorts, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I won't wear shorts, even when it's hot, because I'm afraid of my chicken legs. Like, my calves are, like, because of, like, Taekwondo, like, they're, they're, I guess, like, really cut. But oh, they're not, right? like, like, yeah. Sorry? Tone. Tone. They're, there we go. Tone, That's like... a better word for it. Tone. So, like, they're, they're really that. And I remember, like, getting compliments on them. But it's not the, uh, like what you're mentioning. It's a little bit different, like with that. It's just like I feel muscles like there, there. their right? muscles are like, there, but I feel like they're so like my legs are skinny, and that's a fear because like I I think I mentioned this before is like I I barely do leg day at the gym even though I know I should leave me alone. <laughs> I know I should, <laughs> but I did take one do. Leave me alone. So I did take one do for 14 years, fam. I worked legs for 14 years. I don't need to do it in the gym too. I did it for 14 years. They're good. They're fine. Not they're not actually. I can't I can't even kick as high as I used to, bro. I can't even I barely could get my leg off the ground. Like I have to Yeah, that's inside. what happens for when you retire, right? So. Well, that is true. That is true. That is true when you retire there. But like I did it, you know? I did I did legs. <laughs> I did my leg workout forever. No, obviously when I I when the world opens back up, who knows when? When, when, sorry, I shouldn't even say the world because the world is kind of opening back up other places. When Ontario opens <laughs> back up, then then I'll, I'll, I'll try to do it properly where I do leg day too because that's, I know, it's the most important thing for everything else, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but I've man. always been like, like where I, I, I'll rarely, like even when it's hot, like it has to be really hot where it's like, hey, it's kind of stupid not to wear shorts right now. That's when I'll do it. And I'm like, it's always like this thing, but it's like, who cares, bro? Who cares? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to with a lot of things, but I'll still kind of like, it'll be, it's not as bad as it was, but it's still something that's in uh, the back of my head where I'm just like, I don't want people looking at my legs and saying they're chicken legs, you know? Yeah. I So I, I was never, uh, I wouldn't even call it insecure about my legs. I just never cared about them. So I, yeah. I would wear shorts. I'm not crazy like you. If it's hot, I'm going to wear shorts. <laughs> I want to stay cool. I'm a, you're, not, oh. you're a sane person. You're not like yeah. Dante. <laughs> yeah. So, but like I didn't notice that I had big calves until people started to like tell me that I had big calves. Because to, to me, they're just normal size. Um, mm. And then when I started trying trying to get like you know how fashion changed to like a lot tighter, a lot slimmer clothing. Yeah. Um, I tried to tried to get into fashion, but it's like. I can't put my calves are so tight. I can't bend my legs. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh but yeah, because yeah. then it's like, oh, I see what you mean. That's yeah. That's that's an interesting because I guess it would be it would have to be like but custom then. That's, no, that's why I had Unico have these stretchy khakis, which ah, uh, then the it best. works. They're, yes. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, so yeah. amazing. Yeah, like, and I hate the. I hope we go it, it, it shifts back to baggy i think it's kind of doing that now anyways because the skinny like but i think it's with the pandemic stuff like there's these jeans that i have these black jeans and they were like i think they were because sometimes too just like if you get jeans if you don't get all your jeans from one place even when you're getting them from one place the even if i do because i'm i'm 30 32 so waist uh 30 length 32 so even like for that one if i go for like uh slim straight right then some will have it where it takes it fits tight and then other places will have it where it should fit how i feel it should fit so like these black jeans like i i got into them the other day and bro my thighs were like i was like this is this is too i can't do this i can't do the skinny jean stuff man i, I don't like it i don't it, it has to be like either a little bit not like completely loose but looser on my legs I, I think like slim is like the slim, yeah, like the whatever. right one. Yeah, slim. Yeah, because like, and I think you're right. Where we're trying to get away from the skinny jeans because skinny jeans look just weird. Yeah, it's it's um, it's, it's but yeah. It's, it's, it's that's that's where my calves are kind of ruining it because I want to get into slim pants too. Right, like it's just it's not straight, but like it's it's more not tight too, but it's just more fitted, I guess we'll say. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like. Because my calves are so big, it, it like I said, it fits nice up to the knee, yeah. and then below the knee, it's like it's just so tight. I just don't know. It just looks so weird. It looks like skinny jeans from the knee down. From like, the knee down, but not above. <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, if you find a place to buy pants, always buy pants from that place because you know the yeah. fit, you know how it's you know gonna work. That's why Uniqlo is like my go-to now because if it fits, I'm never gonna go anywhere else. They have the right pants that I'm looking for, the right fit, and I hope yeah. they just never change it because yeah. Well, I think society too is, is is being more comfortable with like joggers as stuff that you could wear wherever. So yeah. that's what I kind of like because like those that like joggers like you get the right joggers and everything or just sweats. That's I could I could stay in sweats or joggers the rest of my life. That's nice. Yeah, like I I like it. Um, I probably still wear jeans here and there. Um, but yeah. What about because this one this one's like a this one's a big one for me. I've always kind of this one. I don't. I, I I I honestly say like I don't feel the the struggle with it in different ways, but I don't feel it anymore. But um, for me, it was always like um, feeling or not being black enough, and like that was something that kind of um, that I dealt with younger. But then there was something that I I read. I can't remember who said it. And this was a few years back that's kind of helped me with it a lot is that um, black people aren't monolithic. And I think there's always this idea that society tries to put for black people that they're always some certain way. Because whenever, if I if ever heard like, hey, you're whitewashed or blah, 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 which I don't think I am at all. But like, if I have heard that, it's never been from another black person or rarely from another black person. It's been somebody outside of our race trying to say, hey, you guys should be this way. Or yeah. you're painted this way. You should act this certain way. You should be like this. You should do whatever and blah, 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 blah. And there's these certain stereotypes that I don't like in these boxes that they try to put. But I think that that happens with every race, but just because it's the thing that I am. So dealing with me is like, there's certain things that I think like, if they don't think like black people could be nerds or one thing that I always think, and I think it was really stupid and I always hated it is like I like I would always get good grades or stuff or be like a goody good in school. And I yeah. feel like maybe sometimes that was the one I'm just like, but we can be like, why, why would you think that all of us are like every, for every race, anybody, there's people that are not good in school or great in school or whatever. And sometimes too, like just the way things are taught, some people have to learn different ways. And if it's being taught one way for everybody, then it doesn't work for everybody too. So yeah. that's one thing that I've always I don't struggle with it now because like I'm confident. I love being black. It's, it's it's a beautiful thing. And one thing my dad always said to us is young. And I, I didn't understand it. I understand it now. But um, he will always say black is beautiful. And I didn't understand it when I was younger. Like he would say that repeatedly to me and my brother when we were younger. And I didn't understand it. But I understand it now because that's something that people try to say that it's not. Like there's mm-hmm. always things again, like darker skinned people or anything like that. They're trying to like, oh, it's always lighter skinned people are more beautiful or whatever and everything like that. But it's yeah. just like, that's something that now I understand as an older person, especially seeing how the world is now, is something that I understand more why he would say it to us so that we were confident in our skin and would love it. Right. And it's something that I'm really happy for too. And like, like both my parents would always just make sure we 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 loved who we are and everything like that as well too but that's one thing that like i've always now i'm like it's, it's kind of disgusting that you can't put us in boxes because we're not and that's a beautiful thing and i think that's for every race too like you're not monolithic like not everybody has to be this one way but um that's like insecurities and in, like being my race and everything there too because like just for like the stupid stereotype with all black people are good at basketball Obviously, not every person's good at basketball. A lot of us are, yeah. <laughs> but not every single like I'm. T- I, but I'm. I'm not good at a lot of sports. Like I could throw a football. I could throw a spiral. But I don't think I'm a football star. And like soccer, when I was a kid, I was kind of good. I was like, I, I played soccer when I was younger. I was kind of okay. Now I can't do it. Well, you're not like, good at basketball. Sports- you got invited to Vince Carter's camp, though. <laughs> no, my dad got me in Vince Carter's camp. <laughs> I don't even remember how. I don't know how I got. I don't think you had to. I don't know what the thing was to get into it, but somehow I got into Vince Carter's camp and I was doo doo. Still now doo doo. But like, yeah, I just, I don't know. But what about like you? Like, do you ever feel insecurities that way? Maybe about your race? Yeah, I do. I feel the same way. Sometimes I just feel like I'm not black enough to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't. I should have seen it coming. <laughs> 
You struggle with that a lot? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, but I, yeah, no, I understand what you mean. Like, yeah. being an Asian, obviously, the most common is, like, you can't drive or you're really mm. smart at math. You're good at math, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, unfortunately, I am good at math. That's just well, the way not an unfortunate was, thing. It's a great thing. <laughs> But like I'm good at math wanna, too, right? So it's just like I don't want to feed into yeah. the stereotypical stereotypes and everything. But that's that one is no, is, yeah. But yeah, sorry, no, I was just my my parents just took me to like math school, like a like math tutoring when I was younger, and then for whatever reason, I was a I felt like I was the dumbest kid up until like grade nine because in elementary school, honestly, my grades. I got a 40 in algebra in like grade four and my parents are like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, Oh, what the hell this shit is, man. And then in grade nine, it just felt like everything made sense. Like my grades are actually, my average in grade high in elementary school was like 70. But then all of a sudden in high school, it just shot up to like a 90. And I was, I was like, I don't know what happened. It just, things make sense now. Um, but yeah. Mm back to like racial stereotyping and stuff like that it's like uh, it's there's a lot of things that i i feel like i feed into the stereotypes but it was almost like that's just how other asians kind of showed me like this is what we're supposed to like this is what we like and all that stuff mm -hmm. um but there is one thing i think i i guess it never really occurred to me until recently but I have darker skin compared to all the other Asians. And mm. it's like this really big thing in Asia, Korea, Japan to be mm. like lighter, like a light skin Asian. Um, so when people see me, they don't think I'm from China or like, obviously I'm from, yeah, I'm not from China, but I'm Chinese. They don't think I'm Chinese because of my darker skin. Mm. Um, so they think I'm more like Filipino, uh, I was Indonesian. just about to ask if it was like Filipino that you were getting. Instead. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but there's like a beauty standard, I guess, um, about being light skinned. And I, uh, to me, I just don't care because it's my dark skin is kind of like my own fault. When I was a kid, I hated sunscreen. So whenever I went to the beach, I was just tanning all day, all day, mm. every day. I just never got burned. But it, I came out and I was darker. So, yeah, it, it's something that people have recently brought up. And I think it's because Asian culture is getting more popular. Um, and so the beauty standards are starting to be projected onto the Western world. Uh, but, yeah, it's there's a lot of stuff that I guess that I've just, I, I follow stereotype quite a bit, like, Okay, I can drive. I'm probably like one of the best drivers, but I think mm -hmm. anyone who drives their car will tell you that. Yeah. Like, math. <laughs> for sure. But like, it's just like the negative, I think for both our races or for like any race, it's like these negative, stupid stereotypes that you're trying to push people in the box to make yourself feel better than the other race sometimes too. And it was just like, like why like you don't have to because i think like with every single stereotype you could find anybody in any race that does that particular thing yes in certain things obviously there's certain things that a black person may do differently than a white person or whatever and vice versa or an asian person does different than a black person or whichever but like it's not like i just don't like trying to put like people in this one box like you have to be this certain way and there's cer this certain image where everybody is like different and it's it's beautiful like being different and stuff as well too, but um yeah, that's yeah that's, no I think yeah when I was a kid and like obviously uh, when I was a kid I was kind of with with black people I was always like oh and I think it might have also been the other black people at our school mm -hmm. they're always so gangster and very scary at times because they're mm -hmm. just so. In not because they're black, but they were definitely intimidating. Like they were first of all <laughs> taller than us. <laughs> like uh, they were taller than us, and they would always have like a, a, this mean look, or like yeah, you would say some. Sometimes they said some of the craziest shit. Sometimes <laughs> they did those crazy shit, and you're just like, I might die. <laughs> 
Yes, but see, that's that's the, that's that's one of the things, right? But it's like when you get to know us and everything, I think there's that front because um, I've heard this thing too, and I think it's something that study as well too. If like you've never been around a black person, right, and all the imagery you get is us being criminals, us being drug dealers, us being um, negative, uh, us being absentee fathers, us being uh, addicted to drugs, us being whatever, all that bull, right? Like, or us being gangster or whatever. Then you have this image of us where we're not approachable or we're scary or we're intimidating, mm -hmm. right? And then obviously, yes, some people can be intimidating, but for like me, it's just like, and I think that's one of the things, right? Like, cause I don't think I'm intimidating. <laughs> I, I think I've, I've been intimidating to people, but like, I think it's cause of the height too. Like, I don't think I've been intimidating. And I think that's one thing like, oh, well, you're not so scary, blah, 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 blah. But like, I don't think we're like, just like I was mentioning the head nod thing. I think we're the most friendliest and loving people, right? Cause it's just like, who else do you randomly, like, I don't know this person. I'm going to head nod with you, say what's up, whatever, and move on, right? Just like, hey, you good? Mm -hmm. Boom, done. Just like, it's just this, this sense of community that I love and everything too. So I think it's like, I think part of that is um, that negative stereotype, right? Where you, like, yeah. you have this certain way. So yes, but I think every race could have people that are intimidating and like feel unapproachable. But like also too, like if you were maybe intimidated by this person, once you get to know them, you see how friendly they are in the world too, right? And everybody has people that does crazy stuff and anything as well. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah, but I think, okay, so if I were to walk down a street mm -hmm. and uh, I guess it wouldn't, yeah, you're right. It's, it would, if, well, if a black guy were to walk up to me, I'm not scared because of what he might do. I'm scared that if I do something wrong, he has black jeans and likely he's going to be stronger, faster, faster than me because of those jeans. And it's, I think it's been proven that black people just have like technically the more athletic genes. It's like, I can't do anything about that. Well, I think if I yeah. were to challenge you to a race, I would actually lose because <laughs> you actually can run fast. I think I've seen it. And I was like, what no, the you hell? You don't look it. <laughs> But holy shit, what the fuck is that? There's, so yeah, there's, there's some things I, that are, but that's just like athleticism too. I'm sure there's like people like there's an Asian person that could be faster than me. Yeah, that's that true. Too. But I, but I think it's it's unlikely. I think it's very unlikely unless they've been training well, for like, a long if, time. That's. But if there was like another Asian person that was down the like alley and they were bigger than you and more D's than you, it'd well, be the I'm same thing. Yeah, no, I'm scared it'd of them the anyways. Thing. Right, like yeah. I, I just yeah. think it'd be the same thing with anything, but I think it's it's that thing where you try to make it feel like we're not you, per, not you. I'm not saying you. I meant like like society and uh. Yeah, it's you know it's pretty. Yeah, it's yeah. I know what you mean. Like where we try yeah. to associate every single person of that race of with that one thing, religion, whatever, with one particular image that we've been given our perception exactly. i think when i met you that's kind of when i started to learn about the black stereotypes because i don't think i really knew much about them but i think it was and it, it might just be because then i got exposed more to the media okay this was also back in the time day we didn't have phones instagram yeah, yeah media was really hard to come by so yeah um yeah it was it was probably around that age that we started to focus more on the news and focus more on TV, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and maybe when we started growing up, but I think it was only after I met you that we started, that I started picking up on stereotypes, but I never associated you to be like stereotype, like, Oh, this is Dante. This is I don't, again. I don't even remember how we met, how we encountered each other. And no, I, I don't it's remember a, either. I was thinking that's about the that weirdest too. shit ever. I don't remember how we started talking. To, I have no idea. The first memory I have of us together is eating lunch together. That's the yeah. first memory uh, I have of us. But, <laughs> and I don't know why we eat lunch together. Yeah, I don't because we were in separate classes, right? Yeah, I don't honestly remember how. And I know so I've met. There were some other black students in our class my class at least mm -hmm. that 
he was a straight up gangster and he kind of scared me <laughs> um because man oh my god he did some of the craziest stuff and i was like what the hell is going on like this stuff i can't speak on camera but it was like things you would just never think about as a kid but right. i i think i don't think i ever associated him being like scary or intimidating because of his skin color because if i did i would have been scared to approach you but i would, i don't remember why i approached you i don't like, remember either i don't remember Man, if only they had cameras back then. Because I'm, I'm so Just curious. Just watching how... kids interact with each other. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a... I don't know. But, but what do they have to make sure? You know, like, oh, they have a CCTV of kids doing this. What the hell? No, I think... I don't know. There's no CCTV on kids. I think we're monitored enough now, right? <laughs> that's true. But uh, what I was going to... Oh, because I, I want to go off the ledge because to... It ties into the 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 stereotype stuff and the the picture stuff, because uh, with her name is a uh, uh, Makaya Bryant. Excuse me if I'm saying the name wrong, but uh, she was just shot and killed uh, by police. Um, this situation um, is a little bit different than the Dante Wright one, for example. Uh, just to give an example, because uh, one thing with um, a person in another podcast was mentioning this. So in this situation, usually when they know the cop is at fault, they'll play around with the body cam stuff and not release it right away. They'll hold yeah. it off and they'll, they'll, they'll keep it away. But with this one, they felt to release it right away because apparently she called, I'm, I'm just going off of memory, so excuse me if I'm messing up stuff, but she called the police because she felt in danger because there was somebody, I think, coming at her house or whatever, but she had a knife and she was trying to defend herself. So when the cops got on the scene, um, she had a knife and the cop shot her four times. So I've heard the stuff where, oh, she had a knife. This girl's 16 years old, by the way. Yeah. Um, so they're like, oh, she had a knife, blah, 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 blah. And then my thing with that is there's that piece of shit that killed two people at whichever protest. And I can't remember which one, but, and he had a gun, like a full assault rifle. Yeah. And they were able to apprehend them, no problem. They even thanked them. They're like, thanks for your help, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That other piece of shit that killed nine people in the church, and they were able to apprehend them, had an assault rifle as well, too. Both white males, I'm not trying to, you know what I mean, though. Like, both yeah. white males, and they were able to apprehend them, no problem. Even with the guy who uh, shot people in the church, they were able to, to bring them, they brought them, they, they took them to Burger King, whatever, after, too. So you can't tell me that there's not other ways to do this and because it, it ties into that, hey, we're painting black people as the bad people all the time. Yeah. All the time as the bad person. There's no way to, because obviously there's ways to like calm down the Subdue. situation, de-escalate. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to try to do. The gun's the last resort. I understand being a cop is a hard job, but obviously if you can't do that, if you're mixing up a taser with a gun, there's certain people that shouldn't be doing it. So yes, we know it's a hard job and it's a hard job for a reason. So I think like with that, that's a whole different thing. I'm not going to get into it. But with this, I think the other stuff was like when we're saying Black Lives Matter, we're not saying more. We're, we're just saying matter, right? We just want equality. So the same It's almost way, like you're starting at zero versus the 100% caring. Right. Like they, they should also be 100%, not, you know, exactly. you're 100 and they're 75. It's, it's Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. So the same way somebody with an assault rifle could get apprehended, because there's other stuff too. Like, I think there was another story recently, like two weeks ago, where a white male was like wielding a knife, going crazy at the cops, and they were able to apprehend them without shooting him and killing him. So yeah. we know it can be done, but it just seems like every time it's a black person, it can't be for whatever reason. And they have to be shot yeah. and killed. So you have a taser, you could have used that to stop her. I understand not tackling her because if she has a knife, you could get stabbed, whatever. But you have a taser, yeah. you're telling me a taser can't take out a 16-year-old to stop her and calm her down? And then now we have somebody that doesn't lose their kid. And we have a kid that we just figure out what was going on, why they were in trouble and try to work that out instead. So it's just like yeah. that whole thing, like even if we, we like joke about it or what else as well too, there's this thing where right off the bat, we're treated as the enemy and we're not. And it's, it's, it feels like it's open season on us, right? Where yeah. all we want is to be treated the same way where we're people too. We have families too. 
we're loving people, right? We're accepting yeah. people. So that, that's just, we just want to be treated the same way and even to be even given the benefit of the doubt as well too, to be able to be helped. Because I know, I'm not trying to put that out there because I don't want stuff like that to happen. But I know if that was a white 16 year old girl, she'd be here. They would have apprehended her. So it's just like, I, it's just that, 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 that stuff, like just talking about the insecurity and that whole stereotyping stuff. That's always something that, that bothers me, especially with what we're seeing on in the news that keeps going on. And I really want it to stop, but like, yeah, that, that's always something that always troubles me. But like, it's, it's, it's like this underlying thing, like even like a small thing can be like in those situations where something goes bad and somebody has to, somebody loses the life, somebody loses their kid, somebody loses their sibling when they didn't need to. Right. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. stuff like it's, that. It's, it's always, it's always troubling me, but yeah. Yeah. It's like, I agree with you. Like the cops, there's so many ways they could have de-escalated so many ways they could have subdued her. But, and like you said, the gun should be the last resort, but it almost felt like they skipped. They're like, can't use my hands. Can't use, can't use my hands. I'm going straight to the gun. Just straight like to the gun right away. Four shots. In between. Four yeah, shots. It's... it's a kid. She's a kid. Because that's the other thing they do too. They're like, oh, the cop killed a woman. No, she's 16. Yeah. She's a kid. So it's just like, I, yeah, this, it's, it's always troubling me. And it's just like, you hope it's where you don't have to talk about stuff like this because like i just can't imagine for like the parents or anything like that as well too and but like i just feel like it's it's a it's it's a disservice because that's something i struggle with too and i don't know if that lets like another insecurity um like whenever stuff happens like this right on social media i won't uh i think with george floyd and then the situation where the lady um, this that was in Toronto, where she was having like a mental break, and the cops came, and then suddenly she was out the window and fell down. So they were saying she got pushed, and I don't remember how that ended up being, but I remember I think I posted like the GoFundMe for that, the GoFundMe for George Floyd, and something else. But I don't do it every single time, um, because it's it's always something I've struggled with, because I feel like generally, the people that I have on social media feel the same way about it so yeah. i don't want to i feel like i'm uh oh, there's a term i'm looking for but i can't think of it so i don't want to feel like i'm just oh like i'm in an echo chamber so i'm just echoing the same thing because we know the same thing we all know this is wrong and shouldn't be happening in these different situations but then like now that this is more like long form in a podcast i just feel like it's a disservice to not like mention these different yeah. situations and like maybe it, it won't be like every single one but like definitely i feel like you just have to like oh, talk about I it don't bring think, attention to it yeah i think well first of all you i think you have to think about it and uh in terms of the social media like from a different standpoint someone who owns a business they'll post all their stuff on instagram um so that they can promote their business and even though like even though we know what they sell or what their business is it's yeah for the people who are following them they don't it's not really a bother but i think with something as you know something as big of an issue as this yeah i don't think the people on your if they don't want to follow you they'll they unfollow you but yeah, the yeah. people who will and it it's you might assume that everyone that's following you like understands the situation um but i can almost guarantee that no that's not true yeah yeah so like obviously i understand like well i don't understand what you're going through as a black male or as a black person in today's society but i understand that this is wrong like this is not mm -hmm. supposed to happen like it, just the methods that are used between the two races, if it were a different race, it's just uh, ridiculous almost. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous, not almost. But yeah, I think it's for who cares if if they don't want to see it, they'll unfollow you. But then you know that. Then then I know. Yeah. Then like, I know that. You know, that, like it yeah, shouldn't bother you if you're on a story. Like if you don't want to see it, you can skip it. Right. Um, I don't like watching videos like that only because. 
it's disgusting to me. So I I, I like to just read the news. Um, oh yeah, I, I like wouldn't. I, I would. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt there, but I would never post a video because I can't watch the videos. Like I I, I can yeah. never bring myself. I think I was mentioning like I I've never watched the George Floyd. I didn't watch the Dante Wright. I didn't watch with Micaiah Bryant. I can't. I, I it's just like it's it's too much. I can't because it's also a thing where I don't want to, and I don't think I'll ever ever will. But you're just worried about being desensitized to it because you're seeing it so much. So then you're getting used to it, and that's something I never want to happen. Not saying that watching the videos would do that, but it's just something that I just I I don't like that picture of seeing my people dying. Right. So it's just like, yeah. I, I don't, I can't bring myself. It's too, it's, 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 tr it's traumatic. Like every single time it's traumatic. It's just like, I don't want it. Cause then you start going with, what if that's my cousin? What if that's my brother? What if that's God forbid all the stuff I'm saying now? What if it's my yeah. parents? What if it's somebody I know? What if it's a friend? What if it's anybody? Right. So it's just like, it's yeah, it's just, in, but uh, uh, another point I wanted to make is like, I think it's this weird thing too, where, this is kind of separate, but I'll bring it back. You know, like when a YouTuber, for example, shows them doing a good deed. Yeah. Like donating to a homeless person or whatever. Those ones I always struggle. It's always this fight in my head. Well, yes, yeah, spread positivity. Cause like the stuff that goes viral is usually negative, right? Like people like yeah. drama, people like the negative stuff, but then it's just like, why can't we do that in silence? Like yeah, just do a no, good I, thing without I having think... to record it to get views. Right. So like for me, I've donated to like the different families. I'm not going to say how much or whatever. And, but like, I've, 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 I've sent money and I've sent donations. Like what I can't, I'm not rich or anything, but I've sent yeah. like money. And I, I just like, I'm not gonna be like, Hey, I'm donating. And I've, I've never done that. And I don't have a problem with somebody that's doing that, but like, it's, it's always this weird struggle. And I think, I don't know why I, cause I, I tend to overthink anyways, but I always overthink stuff like that where not just posting it maybe, but like, I guess mentioning the donation stuff is, is is like something where I'm just like, hey, why can't I just do it in silence? Like, I don't need like, hey, look at me doing this. Congratulate yeah. me for doing this, right? Doing this good deed. That's something that I always struggle with, but it's not always that. Sometimes you could see when it's obviously that for somebody, but um, like I, for I me, think, it's not that. Um, it would just be like, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I have the same thought process like mm -hmm. why especially with the youtubers who i think it, it's mainly with the youtubers who have like really bad reputation already right um, right and then they come up with something like that it's like they, now you're just trying to save face right mm -hmm. but i think last year when um the george george floyd incident happened mm -hmm. um my instagram and i think maybe twitter too was getting flooded with you know people donating to uh, i can't remember what it is the minnesota fund i don't remember what it's fully there called. was a few things it, it, it might have been like the minnesota bail fund but or something like it that it was like the main the one that or the black lives matter that, thing or whichever it was i know what you mean i know what you mean yeah. yeah yeah so there was one but i think at the time it uh, I saw a lot of people posting it, but the first thought that came to my head was, was not, wow, why are these guys showing off? I think it, it actually raised awareness at the time because I right. had no idea yeah. that we could donate. So I, I actually ended up donating myself. Um, but like, so in like in certain situations, I don't, for certain situations, similar to like these um, pop killings, uh, pop killing the black people, for the lack of better words, that sounded really bad when I said it. But mm -hmm. for situations like that, if you were to make a donation, I wouldn't even be appalled if you shared it on Instagram. Only because for this situation and the Dante, um, I forget his last name, but right, Dante, right. for that, yeah. If you made a donation to their family or a foundation that's going to help them, mm -hmm. I would, I would, again, I'm not going to, I would not be opposed to you sharing that on Instagram, on social media, whatever, mm -hmm. only because it's going to just raise awareness. Yeah. Um, and it's also, again, like you, like you said, the people following you on social media, they know that this is wrong and they know that 
they want justice. We all want justice. We all mm-hmm. want to fix what's broken. Mm-hmm. But it's just some of us, like myself, we don't know how or we don't know where to go or how, right, right, how right, we can right, help. Right, right. Okay, so for something yeah. like that, where it's like, share it. Maybe you get more people to start contributing because they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, my friend's doing this. It's a good cause. Yeah. I'm going to help too. So yeah. yeah, for something like that, I would not be opposed to seeing that because again, it's going to raise awareness. It's going to show people, hey, if you want to help, this is what you want to do. But if you don't, at least you know about it. At least you are right. Right. aware of what's happening. Right. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, yeah. I like the the donation part. I mean, like, um, because what I was kind of narrowing down on, but that, like the overthinking is like showing the donation part. I have no problem with people sharing the links to spread awareness because I agree, right? Like, like you're saying, maybe people don't know. That's another way. the The point you made though about the business stuff too, like, hey, you know what this business is? You know what they sell, but they still constantly promote themselves. I think that's a good way to look about it and think about it as well. Yeah, um, it's again, like you yeah. said, if they don't want to follow, they don't want to see it, they won't. But then you're you're really narrowing down your message because you might also, again, raise awareness about it. I, I'm one of the people that were that learned something from that that was aware. Oh, hey, everyone's donating to this. What is it? How? Like I know George Floyd. Whatever happened there was bad. How can I help? And I right. think. A lot, if it wasn't for those, it, there was no way I would have known, hey, this is a great way to help, you know. It might not have been the best way because apparently they got so many donations, they told everyone to start donating to other ones. Yeah. Um, but that being said, it's, it's just the awareness of it. So like, yeah, just post it online. If you make a donation, you don't have to post how much if you don't want to share. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's it's good to say, hey, this is happening, first of all. Mm-hmm. And if you want to help, this is how this you is can how, help. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, a good we're point. in a, I think racial identity and stereotyping today, surprisingly, is a, such a big issue because I was, I don't know, maybe it's just the way we were raised, but to me, it was like, it wasn't a big deal for me. Like I was... I would never judge people based on their skin color. Yeah. I met you and I was like, oh, he's smart, you know, but I've definitely met other black people who were not. And that, and then it almost dawned on me, like, like you said, I, I think I also realized it a little bit late, but it was maybe the methods that we use in school just didn't translate well to these people. Yeah. To, to the people who were struggling. And it's, for me, it worked well for you. It worked well, but others, might not have been right yeah um but yeah it's i also didn't even know about the asian stereotypes again until after we met until we started watching more mature content like family guy because yeah 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 i just i guess i was just oblivious to it and then shows like family guy american dad south park those started to kind of mold an image of what we expect black people to do what we expect asian people to do yeah um you know, Middle Eastern people, there's just, it's just, yeah, well, what can you do? It's the media and how we're exposed to it, right? No, that's true. Cause like, obviously, um, like, cause I, I understand with comedy shows, cause that, that, that's always a thing too, right? Comedy, if it's funny, where it's not like to hurt somebody, like if you're just making jokes about a stereotype that you notice, I don't mind. Cause like me, I'm, I think I I could take jokes better than others. Like I don't get offended easily, but I will get offended for certain things. Like there's certain things that will cross the line. Like another race using the N-word, I never like that. I'll never like it. Mm-hmm. But like, um, yeah. So like I, I understand. Uh, sorry, there was a point I was going to make. Gosh, it's going to come back to me. 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Stereotypes. Well, oh, yes, there we go. Racism, like um, another thing that uh, kind of went around too is uh, racism is taught. So like right off the bat, right? Because like, especially if you, it, it, if you have kids in kindergarten, kids in kindergarten don't care what you look like. They just want to play mm-hmm. with their friend. 
They just want to play. Hey, you got blocked. I got blocked. Let's play together. Right. You have to literally tell a kid, Hey, we don't go around this yeah. certain type of people or this certain type of people is bad because kids will just love people. Right. Like just love yeah. people off the bat. So like for me, I, I, I don't care what race anybody is. I love mm-hmm. people no matter what. Right. And like, and I think it's just, a, it's just, it's just, it's just so stupid that thought like racism, like it's not a smart thought. Like you can't accept somebody cause they're different. Like it's, it's so stupid in, in such a archaic way of, in a wrong way of thinking. So it's just like, I, I still don't understand why. No, actually, no, I, no, that's not true. I do understand because it's like a power thing and blah, 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 right? Yeah. Which... But like, it's just like, what, just, I, know, I think we're, we're, we're turning for the, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. But yeah. I think with the younger generation, because what I noticed too, not even just with race, with uh, sexual orientation, uh, gender identity, and stuff like that too, I feel like as the generations go on, they're a lot more accepting. And I think that's something yeah. to look forward to in the future. Yes, there's still people that maybe still be taught in the dumb, racist, homophobic, transphobic, uh, whatever phobic, idiot ways. But yeah. I think for the most part, we're good. Like if I change my mind about having kids, I know that they'll be accepting and I'd be way more expense, uh, accepting if my kid was, let's say, a trans woman, trans man, or they were gay, yeah. they were a lesbian or anything. I'd, 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 I'd be um, way accepting of that, of whichever. So I think we are turning for the better, but there's still a lot of work and a lot of stuff that needs to be undone right like there's some stuff that's so institutionalized that like you know but like yeah but wow this was a it, it got really deep with you but i i i i figured we were gonna get there with like insecurity yeah i stuff. think because i, I figured, mean yeah. racial identity is probably one part. of the big uh, it's a very yeah. big part of our like it's something well an insecurity is something like we're really concerned about right Mm-hmm. But this is something that we can't change no matter what. It's mm-hmm. it is who we are, right? Yeah. Um, but like you said, there's just still people who believe certain things that just don't make sense. And nope. to us, it just does not really make sense. Um yeah, it's it is definitely the most I don't know what to say, like intense topic of what we talked about today Mm -hmm. Um, but it is something that we can't change so you know love yourself for who you are like yeah and it's a beautiful and you shouldn't feel the need to want to change it right as well too like because the one the the last thing i'll say on this thing is i think the term i don't see color is a stupid one i think it should be where we see color like we see different races and everything but we see the beauty and the differences and we should be accepting yeah. of the differences and also see the beauty and the similarities and how we're all similar too. So I think, yeah, yeah I, I, I think, yeah, ultimately it should be like, and that's something that I had to get to, right? Um, like not saying that I hated myself um, or hated my skin or anything like that, but it's also the, the insecurity parts is something that, yes, I struggled with, but now I'm, I'm better off with. So I think that's one of the insecurities out of all the insecurities. I know it was one of the deeper ones. That's one of the insecurities that are more okay without everything. Like body is something I'll so probably struggle with with everything. Yeah. But loving, like the like loving being a black person is something that'll never change. And yeah. something that I think with, with this like racial identity, gender identity, uh, gender identity, um, sexual orientation, it's more of a mental change that that's the only thing you can change about it. Right. Like mm-hmm. you just, you can't really change who you are. You just have to be accepting of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas like your body, um, your, your hair, breathing, they're, they're all things that you can physically change. Like physically, like, yeah, I want to yeah. change, but it, there is a mental side to it too. Cause you can also just be accepting of who you are yeah. and well, how you, how you look, but with racial identity, there's just no, nothing you can do. Like you really can't change if I'm Asian, I'm Asian. That's it. Like if I'm Chinese, yeah. I'm Chinese. If you're black, you're black. There's the only thing you can do is just change your mental about that. Right. So mm. yeah. Yeah. Oh.
How yeah. like what are we for? I think that was that was great. I like that. Do we have anything you wanted else to talk about? No, I think we kind of hit all the big points. Yeah. I mean, we do have money and status on there, but we're still young, so. I feel like that one too, though. We could kind of put that into. Um, I guess we'll talk about this off <laughs> off, off air. <laughs> Our next topic, what the next topic was, but um, yeah. So yeah, I guess we'll yeah. That's been another episode of On the Ledge with Dante and Ricky. I'm Dante, and I'm Ricky. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Later. guys. Bye. Bye.